So let's have a quick chat about uh, Marita Makar. We have had some uh, very entertaining play. Uh, in the previous video I made in regards to the game, I mentioned that uh, you know, in order for us to kind of fulfill what I feel like is my obligation as part of the chronological playthrough World War II, that, you know, we really wanted to have an experience with the Balkan campaign. And it doesn't need to be the best game in any given uh, set of games. Uh, we just want to have a game that is going to fairly represent, you know, pretty much what went on, and uh, we, you know, hopefully, we'll better model the historical result. And if not, that's okay as well. But we want to get somewhere within the bounds of reality. Well, of course, we didn't get that the first time we started playing, and we uh, reset the game, uh, made a few mistakes here and there. But in essence, uh, we kind of struck upon the, the gaminess or the problem with uh, the very first edition of the Balkan campaign from the Europa series, and that's okay. So uh, with that in mind, we then set about uh, just establishing a house rule for you know, the first spring turn after the winter of 41 or 4041, we would allow for the German intervention. And uh, it, was, it would either be that or the, uh, the first time that the Greeks victory points started to edge above um, above the Italians or whichever was going to happen first that's generally the <laughs> the house rule I created for myself <clears throat> and that seems to have avoided uh, all of the gaminess that uh, went on over in that little part of the Albanian world on the Ad Adriatic coast over there and what that then left us with was conducting the German intervention, which is an interesting little mechanic. You have a situation where uh, all of the Yugoslavian forces are all set up along, uh, along this border here and up uh, over that way. And then as the German units are placed on the map or moved adjacent to the U uh, Yugoslavian uh, units in the first intervention or invasion turn, we roll a die and see <clears throat> if they, uh, you know, turn code or switch sides or whatever the case may be. And uh, on a five or a six, they do so. Now that's only uh, infantry, border units, cavalry, and reserves, but that's a lot of units. And in fact, I think uh, we had three, six, no, that's probably 10 units of which uh, three or four were divisions. Uh, they uh, they they moved off the map, so that left a few holes. Uh, not that it would have made a whole lot of difference anyway, because the Germans just have run amok in this invasion turn. They have uh, move and attack, and then uh, we go through then to the f we skip exploit, finish up the turn, finish up the invasion, and then we go immediately to the German full turn, in which uh, both the uh, um, Italians move and the Germans and the Germans get their exploit and what you're looking at here is the end of the German turn uh, We have uh, finished our exploit uh, We managed in the first instance to attack uh, Thessalonica in uh, the move combat phase and then uh, during the exploit we've uh, moved down oops, Even further down here towards Athens Athens is all the way down there but nevertheless, uh, we've captured a pretty significant portion of Greece. I've, I really didn't think that uh, the Germans could get this far that quick, and I only had a two uh, combat factor value unit sitting in clear terrain, which didn't help. Uh, ideally, you know, we probably should have had one of these these guys here. But we were all in on the uh, on the t on the uh, Italian front and uh, didn't leave enough in reserve back here. And I thought I had a pretty strong, uh, you know, fortified line here. Well, relatively speaking, uh, but uh, they hit the pointy end of the fortress line, which then allowed some guys to meander through here. Uh, as I said, these uh, these uh, abdications or uh, guys that ran away from uh, the Germans and switched sides allowed us to barrel through and capture this town, which is one of the VP towns. So <clears throat> the moment that uh, Thessalonica or Athens or both are captured, uh, that's the end of the game and it's a decisive victory for the Germans. And that is probably, you know, a reasonable place to uh, stop it. I, uh, 
I played through uh, the rest of the turn after I captured this just to see what would happen. And in order for the uh, for the Germans to uh, knock out the Yugoslavians, they just need to capture this one last city here. Now I could see that we could put up a you know a spirited or a somewhat spirited defense for a turn or two, but I, I rushed a lot of German units up against these. Uh, forces here, so it's got a 4-6 there, and there's a 4-6 here and a 4-6 here. Uh, so they could form a good, you know, mountain defense for a period of time and hold this coastline area. Uh, but they do have to keep uh, supply in mind, which means keeping, uh, there's a town, a major town here. I think they've got to keep uh, a supply line between two towns open to qualify for being in supply. So they can basically hole up in these mountains here and, uh, and try and cause problems. But the fight is very much over everywhere else up in this end. I only brought in two uh, panzer divisions up here and a motorized division and just some mountaineers and uh, kind of cleaned up that area very quickly up there. There's another VP hex right here that we took and didn't do too much in the open plains here. The Hungarians did their own business. They captured Beograd and uh, their home country or, or the areas that they wanted to reclaim as their own. Uh, they did most of the dirty fighting there. They lost two divisions and a regiment of engineers and a battalion of, uh, of artillery. So what, what, what do I think of the game? It really doesn't matter what I think of the game. Uh, Europa is actually a pretty straightforward system. You moves your guys, you fights your guys, and your tanks get to move again. And there's some supply things, and there's a little bit of a convoluted air game. Um, I'm almost inclined to think that the GDW World War Three air war rules would be, uh, if they could be grafted onto here in a modified version, would be much more elegant and useful to use, um, but may not accurately reflect history uh, necessarily. So what do I think of the game? I think the game is fine. You know, it does what it's supposed to do and uh, it's got some, had some issues, obviously. Uh, they're the losses for the, for the Greeks for the turn, these guys here, for the invasion turn and the, uh, the other, uh, the, the first, uh, the, the February 2nd turn. And they're the losses for this, uh, for the invasion and uh, this turn. For the Yugoslavs. So that's it. The British didn't play a factor. Uh, you know, they've got two units over there somewhere. So that, that's the game. Uh, we'll, uh, I'm going to finish clipping a couple of the counters just because I'm a whack job like that. And we're going to move on to the Winter War from SBI. So we're kind of going backwards in time for the moment. We'll, we'll play that. Uh, we'll give that one or two plays. Get a feel for the history there. I, I've, like I said in my post earlier on, I've read a not a lot, but I've read two books on the topic, and that's more than I read on most topics, uh, unless it's a, a broader subject. But uh, for that very limited engagement, I've read two books on uh, that uh, effort, and plus the S&T magazine, and I, I have enjoyed reading about the uh, nobility of that fight and the barbaric nature of it as well. So uh, Winter War is up next. There it is over there. Uh, we'll get cracking on that in the next uh, half hour or so. And uh, I've enjoyed kind of exploring some of these older titles and uh, appreciating where uh, the uh, some mechanics have come from, from, ga from certain games and how they've kind of migrated their way into modern games or, or have been uh, honored in, in modern games. So that's all been very interesting. And we will uh, talk to you soon.